Vancouver. Thank you. Uh, Honourable Speaker, you'd have to be earning a quarter million dollars a year to live in Metro Vancouver and not realize that the region is in serious housing crisis. This Premier, despite plea after plea from business, from organizations, from academics, from families, has refused to step in and protect housing affordability for people who work hard, helping to build Metro Vancouver. Now a new report from SFU has been released conclusively showing that international speculators are the main factor driving the out-of-control real estate in Metro Vancouver. This report will come as no surprise to anybody who's been paying attention. To the Finance Minister, when will this government finally take action on the international money that is driving Metro Vancouver's real estate market? Minister of Finance. Uh, thanks, Madam Speaker, and to the, uh, the member. And, and firstly, I should say that uh, given the state of the market, I think it's important that uh, people offer their, uh, their views, their ideas, their, their uh, opinions and their theories. Um, I, I have the report that I think the member is uh, referring to, and uh, of course the, uh, the author, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Josh Gordon, has done that. I, I do note in the foreword, though, he, he offers this um, qualification and says, I do not claim any expertise in this area. My, uh, my academic work is far removed from this area. Now, Madam Speaker, that doesn't in any way disqualify uh, Mr. Gordon or anyone else from offering, uh, <laughs> offering views on uh, issues, public issues, in including, uh, including this one. But, you know, I recall it was just a few months ago that the member was standing in the House and, and telling us that one of the key fundamental issues that required intervention on the part of the state and on the part of the government was the vacancy rate in Vancouver. And yet, when we secured, actually not the City of Vancouver uh, commissioned uh, a study, it was determined that the vacancy rate today is actually lower than, than it was 12 years ago. Madam Speaker, uh, the government is taking steps. The member knows what some of those steps are, but we are resolved to base our decisions on sound data and not theories or conjecture. Recognizing Vancouver Point Grey on a supplemental. Honourable Speaker, the Minister's dismissive tone is entirely consistent with this government's response to the crisis. The Premier... The pre Members. The Premier mocked Metro Vancouver families worried about housing affordability. She told the media these families should just move north if they don't like housing prices. The Housing Minister said that Vancouver housing was, quote, actually pretty affordable. That was the same year, Honourable Speaker, an international study said it was the least affordable housing market in the entire world. Instead of blaming Metro Vancouver families, blaming the assistant professor who pulled together multiple studies done by very distinguished individuals, Professor Tom Davidoff from the UBC Sauter School of Business found responsibility somewhere else. He said, quote, international money in the housing market can only be a bad thing if politicians are too stupid and lazy to not make sure everybody benefits, unquote. <laughs> so, Honorable Speaker, when will this government stop blaming families, stop blaming professors, stop blaming researchers, and take action on the international speculators in our housing market? Minister of Finance. Uh, thanks, uh, Madam Speaker. I, I have a, uh, it's a study uh, uh, commissioned, I guess, or, uh, by the National Bank, um, a global comparison of property prices for downtown living, price to income ratio, um, and these are on, uh, uh, on a, uh, apartments and condominiums. And it, 
it lists, and it does say actually that in, uh, within Canada, Vancouver uh, is higher in that regard than uh, Montreal and Toronto. But here are the cities uh, that they list as being actually higher uh, and less affordable than Vancouver. Sydney, San Francisco, Stockholm, Paris, New York, Rome, Tokyo, London, Beijing, and Hong Kong. Ma Madam Speaker, uh, we're actually proud of the fact that we have a jurisdiction, that we have a jurisdiction in British Columbia that people want to come to, that they feel they can succeed in, that they want to invest in. Madam Speaker, I know these are publications that the member and his colleagues uh, probably don't often get to, uh, but Bloomberg's uh, a day or two ago in a, in a rather banner headline described British Columbia as Canada's, Canada's newest economic star performer. Madam <laughs> Madam Speaker, proof of that just yesterday uh, from uh, uh, CMHC uh, confirmation that housing starts in British Columbia generally and in Vancouver and Metro Vancouver in particular are reaching record levels, Madam Speaker. That's what The Honourable Member, Madam Speaker, I've, I've discovered, likes to hide behind the ideas and the uh, suggestions of others. Maybe he'd like to stand up and tell British Columbians how much he'd increase taxes. How much? Tell us about the vacancy tax. Tell us about the economic wall he and his colleagues would build if, God forbid, they were ever given the chance to govern British Columbia. The member of Vancouver Point Grey on a supplemental. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. The minister, the minister has our private member's bill, which is based on a proposal from the UBC Sauter School of Business. He knows that the Royal Bank of Canada called Vancouver's housing market astounding, dangerous, potentially detached from reality. He knows these things, Honourable Speaker, and so do families in Metro Vancouver. You know, countless governments around the world act to restrict international speculators in their housing market for an obvious reason. They put the interests of local residents who work and help build the economy ahead of the profits of international speculators. This new report says that the BC government's inaction on this issue is a choice. It is a choice to prefer the profits of international speculators over the interests of hardworking families in Metro Vancouver. To the finance minister, a simple question, yes or no, will he act on this issue? Minister of Finance. Well, Madam Speaker, I'm a little astounded. Will we act? We introduced a measure in the budget that's valued at 13, up to $13,000 for British Columbia families. For the first time since the 1980s, a family can buy a new home in British Columbia and not, not pay the property purchase tax, Madam Speaker. incentives for the construction of new housing, and if there's a part of that economic equation that eludes the member, I'll repeat it for him, Madam Speaker. When demand exceeds supply, prices are going to go up. We're working with people, we're working with families, and we're working with builders to ensure a greater supply of housing right across British Columbia, Madam Speaker. I, uh, I know that, uh, I know that uh, it is galling and troubling. Well, the members are going to want to hear this because I don't think they read this kind of stuff, Madam Speaker. So. <laughs> members, members, two two uh, significant dates, and and by the way, this time it's not the 1990s, <laughs> Madam Speaker. I'm going to go back a little further. For the first time. Dating back to 1976, province of British Columbia has the lowest jobless rate in the country. Lowest jobless rate. And Madam Speaker, we are Thank poised you. to lead the country in economic growth back in back-to-back -back years for the first time since 1961, Madam Speaker. We're 
working to ensure British Columbians can realize their dream to own a home in British Columbia. Yeah.